So today, the Packers and Ravens faced off in a joint practice in Green Bay. The Ravens made the trip up to Green Bay. And so I want to go over lots of the updates that came out from all of the reporters who were at practice today. If you guys are new to the channel, I put out Packers content typically two times per weekday. And so if you want to stay up to date with all things Packers, all Packers news, make sure you subscribe and have the post notifications turned on as well. And you can also follow me on Twitter at Luke Beller 3. So let's get into some of these reports. And if we look back to last Friday when the Packers faced off against the Denver Broncos in that joint practice, it did not go well. The Broncos definitely had a better day than the Packers. It was a pretty poor showing from both the Packers offense and defense. Then in that preseason game on Sunday night, the Packers rested 31 players. And as I said after the game, it was one of the ugliest Packers games I've ever witnessed, scoring only two points. So that was not pretty, and so let's hope the Packers can bounce back going forward. And today, it does seem like they had a somewhat nice day, and you'll see that here. So first off, from Andy Herman at Andy Herman NFL on Twitter slash X. Nothing doing for Packers offense on first two plays. Run nowhere for Jacobs, followed by diving pass breakup by Ravens defender on a flat. Next play is a check down to Jacobs for nothing, but a defensive holding penalty downfield would have given Green Bay a first down. Run inside with Wilson for about four. And right now, A.J. Dillon is dealing with a stinger. The Packers are still waiting on the test results to come back. And from some of the comments from Matt LaFleur and A.J. Dillon, it has me a little bit concerned because it doesn't sound like something that is necessarily um, going to be solved very quickly. It's possible, but just the way they talked about it makes me a little concerned, which means with Marshawn Lloyd, rookie running back, also dealing with a hamstring injury. Right now, the Packers' top two backs would probably be, obviously, Josh Jacobs and then Emmanuel Wilson, who I really like. And then from Andy Herman, love with an absolute dime to Romeo Dobbs on a deep post. Was in double coverage, but thrown perfectly. Dobbs had a quarter of a step, but veteran Eddie Jackson makes a diving pass breakup at the very last second and just barely tips it away. Love to read for a nice pickup on the play. So I guess Love put it in there somewhat nicely, not quite good enough with Eddie Jackson making a nice play on the ball. Then another from Andy Herman. Sean Clifford, the number two QB. First plays a screen to DuBose for a few. Run with Merriweather looks disjointed and goes nowhere. Clifford massively underthrows a ball for Melton, who adjusts as best he could and makes a diving attempt, but can't hang on. So Clifford has definitely had a very up and down camp. Very early in camp, he was throwing so many interceptions. He has not looked great in, he did not look great in this past Sunday's preseason game. And so with it being his second year, there's definitely a battle for the second quarterback spot behind Jordan Love between Michael Pratt and Sean Clifford. So far, I just like what Michael Pratt has shown a little bit more. Uh, he is a year younger, and so I think that there is some opportunity for him to grow as he learns the offense more. But for Sean Clifford, the fact that he struggled a little bit in Sunday's game did not look great. It makes me wonder who the Packers will go with as their backup quarterback. Both guys did struggle this past week, so something to, to watch. Then from Wes Hodkwitz, Stokes breaks up a Jackson, Lamar Jackson, deep ball for Bateman. Then from Andy Herman, Love to craft for a nice gain. Run to Jacobs off right side goes nowhere. Run to Wilson off left side goes nowhere. Run off to left run off left to Wilson goes much better. Gain of eight to ten. So Emmanuel Wilson making a nice play, but um, it seemed like the Ravens defense was doing some good things there on the defensive line, uh, stopping him there. Then Andy Herman proud with a bootleg laser into Dubose along the sideline for about twenty five. Big pickup and awesome throw. So Pratt showing some more nice things. I really like Michael Pratt. Dubose, his first preseason game looked incredible, which I think really put him in the running to make the Packers wide receiver room roster on the 53-man roster. Uh, it'll be tough because he's competing with, I would say, Malik Heath for that six wide receiver spot. And the question comes down to how many wide receivers do the Packers want to keep? If they keep seven, I think it's pretty simple. You have Watson, Dobbs, Reed, Wicks, top four. Then you got Bo Melton, Malik Heath, Grant Dubose. But seven is a pretty high number of receivers to keep. It could more likely be six. And with Dubose playing really well, had a nice rep on special teams in the preseason game on Sunday, I would say he's pushing himself up there and 
right now I may have to go with Dubose, even though Malik Heath has also showed some nice things. He had he was open a couple times in Sunday's game, but the ball was placed poorly, so he could have had a bigger game if the quarterback had put the ball put the ball in the right place. Then from Mike Spofford, first ten snaps for Packers first team offense, five runs, five passes. After a 0 three start including deep shot off play action for well-covered Dobbs. Love completes two straight to read and flat and craft on cross. Most notable, solid pass pro. Love has time to throw Ravens with sticky coverage. One of the Packers' biggest strengths, which it has been, I would say, for a long time, has been their offensive line, specifically pass blocking. You look to last year, the Packers had one of the best pass blocking offensive lines in the entire NFL. You just look at, you know, PFF grades, pass block win rate ESPN they were very very good in that regard and I think that's one of the reasons that Jordan Love was able to find that success because when you have a young quarterback in there and they're getting constantly pressured they don't have time to to make their reads they can start to get uncomfortable in the pocket start making bad decisions and Jordan Love has had the blessing of having a offensive line that that keeps him protected and keeps him safe and this season it's pretty much the same offensive line the only big difference is the right guard where when Jordan Morgan, first-round pick, is healthy, it looks like he will be the right guard. Sean Ryan has been playing there with Jordan Morgan out with an injury. But outside of that right guard spot, it's pretty much the same offensive line. Rasheed Walker, Elton Jenkins, Josh Myers, and then Zach Thomas right tackle. And then from Wes Hodkwitz, TJ Slayton has been outstanding so far. Collapses pocket with Gary coming off edge. Likely sack, still an incompletion across middle. And one of the things we've seen happened very consistently in training camp has been the dominance of the Packers defensive line when we watched them start training camp in week one when Jordan Love was sitting out waiting for his contract which only took about a week to get done the Packers D-line was feasting constantly and honestly has not stopped I think with the new scheme here they seem to like it a lot more because there's a lot less reading and reacting it's much more just attacking and because these guys are so athletic so physically gifted It seems to be playing in the Packers' favor, and starting off today, it looks like that is continuing. Then from Ryan Wood, Jordan Love tried to hit Jaden Reed over the middle. In Ravens, linebacker Roquan Smith undercuts it for a pick. Impressive play from Smith, one of the NFL's best, went up and got the football. Slow start for Packers' offense. So uh, Ryan Wood thinking it's a slow start. Jordan Love throwing a pick. And when you look at, you know, quarterback interceptions in in, uh, preseason in training camp at times you know I feel like you have to take it with a grain grain of salt depending on who it is you know when you've seen guys play in the season and and play really well you know a pick here or there in training camp it's not a big deal personally that's my my belief Um, I've heard from Aaron Rodgers in the past where he talked about how in training camp that's the time where you're wanting to <clears throat> try to, to fit the ball into tight spots and really sort of test and see what you can get away with. And because it's practice, it's not a real game, you can sort of try to test some of those limits to see what you can basically get away with. Then when it comes to the regular season games, you, of course, probably try to be a little bit more um, conservative in, in where you're trying to put the balls and not making crazy throws all the time. But practice is a good place to try that. Not saying it's not, you know, it's good when Jordan Love throws interceptions, but I don't think it's a crazy big deal. Now, if he was going to pick every three plays, then you'd say, you know, what's up here? What's going on? Um, but that's sort of my, my take on that situation. Then from Matt Schneidman on Twitter, notes from first 11 on 11 period between Green Bay defense and Baltimore offense. Bullard and Williams both repping alongside McKinney. So that has been something we've seen most of camp. Those safeties rotating. Bullard most recently has taken the most starting snaps at safety next to Xavier McKinney. And coming into camp, that was my expectation that Bullard would win the job because of his, because of the fact he was a second-round pick, Williams uh, being a fourth-round pick. So you just assume, based on draft position, that one guy will beat the other out. But Williams has definitely put up a fight, and I would expect him to get some snaps this year. And, um, you know, maybe in the future, the Packers try Bullard at nickel corner some, which they have done in the past throughout camp, and Williams could take some of those safety reps so it's good to see both of those safeties playing pretty well in camp so far then continuing the tweet Jackson to Flowers nice gain up right sideline with Nixon in coverage Nixon getting beat there it seems and then Jackson deep left to Bateman incomplete 
Stokes there, but McKinney seemed to force incompletion. Ravens false start in ones and twos. Packers offside once and twos. Enigbare pressure. Cox sack in twos. And then here we have from Paul Brettel. McKinney in on several plays. Tackle and run game at line of scrimmage. Makes tackle in flat on pass. Pass breakup over mid over the middle. And then Bullard starting next to him, but Williams getting work too. And I've said it before, but I think Xavier McKinney getting signed here. One of the best free agent safeties that was available. One of the best safeties in the entire NFL. I mean, that's just the, the biggest move the Packers made this offseason. When you go from a safety room that was shaky last year with Jonathan Owens, Rudy Ford, Darnell Savage, to then get a top-tier elite safety, that is drastically going to change what the Packers do here. I think it's going to drastically change the interceptions that are forced by this defense because of McKinney's ability to fly all over the field. And we're seeing it here, making plays all, all over the field. Then from Andy Herman, Ravens defense making a lot of plays. Two pass breakups and a pick earlier. Just had two more pass breakups in the last two plays. One on Love, one on Pratt. Pratt complete to Heath on a slant for about six. Clifford gets defense to jump, but oddly doesn't take the shot downfield and takes a check down to Merriweather instead that goes nowhere. So the Ravens defense also came to play here, um, forcing some, some incompletions and pass breakups. The Ravens always have such a great defense, and so... Um, Packers offense getting a lot of good work here today. Then from Andy Herman, Sean Clifford just made his best throw of camp. There we go. Malik Heath beat first round rookie Nate Wiggins down the sideline and Clifford put it on him perfectly. Huge gain. So Clifford, especially look, you look last year, last preseason, there were some plays he made in some of those games where people were in my comments, you know, saying Sean Clifford should be the Packers starting QB. Um, and so I think that sort of proves to you that there was some nice things he did last year, even though I think that that was a, a poor idea considering uh, we had not seen too much from Jordan Love. But we know that Sean Clifford can, can make some nice plays. The question I think for him is, can he do it consistently without making, you know, forcing the ball into places he shouldn't? That's the thing I think he needs to probably work on the most. But good to see him making a nice play there. Malik Heath, as I talked about earlier, fighting for one of those final wide receiver spots. Then Paul Brettel, Packers pass rush really started to pick up as a, as team period went on. A nice day for Slayton, Van Ness, Smith, Enigbare, Gary, all creating push. And I think, too, when you look at the Ravens offensive line, I was sort of taking a look at this before this video. I was reading through PFF and their offensive line rankings because I think they do a pretty good job of you know putting out those those offensive line grades and things like that. But the Ravens did lose three starters on the, on the offensive line. And so PFF has the Ravens going into the season as the 25th best offensive line. And so it's really, really great to see the Packers defense continue to dominate up front. Um, but this isn't like it's one of the best offensive lines in the NFL. Just something important to note. Then from Matt Schneiman, Ravens have four false starts in first two team periods. Packers defensive line has been getting steady pressure. More plays. Gary coverage sack on Lamar. McKinney pass breakup over middle after multiple guys get pressure. Jackson, nice completion to Wallace. Stokes trailing and Miller. Ballantyne, good coverage, but better catch over middle. Kalen King, Eric Wilson, good coverage deep downfield on incompletions. So um, it looks like the Packers are making some nice plays. Lamar making some nice plays. When you have a quarterback of, of Lamar's talent, you don't expect to, to shut him down constantly. It's just can you keep them from you know destroying you through the air? And it's good to see, I think, again against a very, very good offense when you have one of the top-tier QBs, to see the Packers getting pressure, to see them, you know, causing some problems when it comes to pass breakups. It's a good sign. And when you look at this Packers season, so much of it comes down to this defense because we already know how good this offense can be. But if you compare that with a, a top-tier defense, then this Packers team really has a chance to, to push far in the playoffs this year. Then from Ryan Wood, Jordan Love's numbers through first three team periods, which were split between first, second down, and third down. Six of 12, 52 yards, interception. It's been a slow start versus Ravens defense. Sean Clifford hit Malik Heath for 45-yard bomb. Michael Pratt hit Grant DuBose for about 25 on bootleg. So that is not a good start from Jordan Love. Um, six of 12, 52 yards, interception. Does not look good. So a slow start there. As you see later, things sort of seem to take a turn. But the Ravens' defense is very, very good. And so um, there we have the Packers' offense struggling a bit. 
Then from Mike Spofford, red zone work, love connects with Kraft on play action throwback. Then hits Dobbs inside the five on sideline out. Incomplete to end zone for either Dobbs or Reed, possible miscommunication. Then from Andy Herman, Pratt makes a nice read to hit Merriweather in the flat and red zone, and he takes it the rest of the way for the touchdown. Needed to be a quick decision from 17, and it was. So I feel like reading through these reports throughout lots of camp, it seems to me, you can tell me what you think, that there's a lot more positives from, from Michael Pratt overall, um, but that's just sort of my my overall takeaway there. Andy Herman, the screen game is picking up. Love to craft on a tight end screen in red zone for a touchdown. There you go. Matt Schneiman, Packers defensive line is feasting in red zone period right now. So that continues. Andy Herman, Josh Jacobs, red zone run goes nowhere. Dobbs with that sick red zone route at the pylon. At the pylon. It's nearly unstoppable unless you're Jair Alexander yesterday. The Ravens, however, do not have Jair Alexander, and it's an easy touchdown. And I, I do think that the best connection here with Jordan Love may be Romeo Dobbs. I just think if you if you came across that interview, which you should definitely check out, um, it was on the Green Light Pod with Chris Long. He interviewed yesterday Kenny Clark, uh, Rashawn Gary, and Dontavian Wicks. And listening to Dontavian Wicks talk about Romeo Dobbs, you can tell just how much respect he has for him first off, but also just the the great things he sees in Romeo. And the thing he noted the most was Dobbs' hands and how it's almost shocking when he does drop the ball. And so that's why I think that Dobbs is probably Jordan Love's most trust, trusted receivers on trusted receiver on big third downs, just because he can get open and. He's very good when it comes to contested catches. And so I do think we're going to see a lot of special things this year from Jordan Love and Romeo Dobbs. Then from Matt Schneidman, he says, Lamar is running for his life out here and not by design. So that is, I mean, that's something you love to see. here. I mean, this is a team that went super far in the playoffs, wasn't able to get all the way. Um, but it's good to hear that we're, we're, we're causing some problems for Lamar Jackson. That's what you want to see. Then from Andy Herman, love to Watson on the sidelines of the end zone for a jump ball touchdown. Offense starting to heat up. And then again uh, from Herman, Dobbs just ran a different route to the same spot and beat Stevens again. Another touchdown. And then Bill Huber says, love throws four passes from inside of 10, four touchdowns. So that's that's a good sign. It seems like things switched up a little from earlier in the day. Of course, when you're inside the 10, I would say the advantage goes to the offense, even though the defense doesn't have to... I guess monitor as much space when you're in that red zone or inside the 10-yard line. But awesome to see them sort of turn that around. Then here from Matt Schneidman. Lamar had two touchdown passes during lengthy red zone period to Kohler and Flowers. Nixon also committed defensive pass interference in end zone, face guarding Tez Walker. Other than those, constant pressure slash sacks in the backfield. So as I said, Lamar Jackson making some plays, throwing some touchdown passes. Um, The Packers doing some nice things as well. Then from Andy Herman, practice Sims for a touchdown to end red zone period. Packers annihilated the Ravens defense in that period. Love it. Paul Brettel, a long red zone period and a good red zone period for Packers defense. I counted 15 plays. Ravens scored two touchdowns. Nixon flagged for pass interference, but overall good pressure from front, particularly Clark. Coverage and secondary contributed to some of the pressures slash sacks. Then from Andy Herman, Love to Dobbs on a play-action slant is almost picked by Roquan again. Roquan flat dropped it. So we do have to know. Love throwing some some bad th- some bad balls here. As I already mentioned, the, the first interception, he throws another here. And with Jordan Love, earlier in the season, you know, when, when we went through that losing streak, there were some really bad decisions that he made where he was just forcing things. We saw that to end the 49ers game. He just was trying to make something happen, threw it across his body, wasn't a good decision. And so... Um, what we want to see from him, of course, this year is to be able to, to limit those kind of plays. Of course, it happens from time to time from a quarterback. But the problem becomes when it becomes a, a consistent issue. Um, it doesn't seem to me like it's been a consistent issue for Love this camp. He's definitely thrown a good amount of picks. But uh, I guess I'm going to clean up there. Keep an eye on Roquan. Then from Mike Spofford, Love almost gets picked again by Smith on shallow cross. I believe that's mentioning the, the previous play. Um, not another one, just to note. Then gets free play on offside, but can't connect with Dobbs. Diving try for Watson on sideline out is no good. Finishes sequence with bullet off play action to Kraft over the middle. Kraft's fifth catch today. And Kraft was dealing with some injuries last year. And if him and Luke Musgrave can stay healthy, 
I mean, that's I mean, they're they're different kinds of guys. I think like Luke, Luke Musgrave is a guy who can stretch the field more faster, um, can connect on some of those you know seams with Kraft. He's just so good after the catch. He's he's a much stronger, um, more physical type guy, and so I think those guys complement each other well. Then Andy Herman, love to Dobbs on a play act. Oh, I already read that one. Forgive me. Here we have from Andy Herman. Love gets another free play, but the pass is broken up down the right sideline. I believe intended for Dobbs. Love incomplete on a corner route to Watson. Looked like Watson had a step, but Love missed him wide and low. The pass pro has been awesome by the offensive line. Love to Kraft over the middle. Big gain. Kraft is a machine. So Jordan Love is having some poorly uh, poorly placed balls today. Then for Mike Spofford. Let me see. Actually, sorry. I already read that one. Somehow that got brought up again. And then from Bill Huber, uh, big gains to Reed and Dobbs. Set up the first for a Carlson field goal in two minutes. On third down, Love throws perfect pass to Wicks in end zone, but tight coverage and incomplete. So perfect pass. I guess they were just fully on it. Then from Matt Schneidman, Justin Tucker, 62-yarder is short to give Packers starting defense the win in two minutes. Wyatt sack on first play before Ravens dinked and dunked downfield to get into field goal range. And if there was one player that I could have from the Ravens or that the Packers could have from the Ravens, I'd probably have to go with Justin Tucker considering our kicker situation has not been great. And there's no doubt Justin Tucker is the best kicker in all of football. He's so incredibly consistent. It would be great to have a kicker of his caliber on this roster. Then from Andy Herman, he says, Joseph hits his field goal to tie the game in red zone period. Today, so far, Carlson 4 of 4, Joseph 3 of 4, Carlson for all of training camp and the preseason 81.7% made field goals. Greg Joseph 78.1%. So Carlson has been playing pretty good the past few days. Um, and if he can keep it up, I mean, he's probably going to win the job. Earlier in camp, it seemed like Joseph had the upper hand. But he's struggled recently, missed a field goal in the preseason game on Sunday, wide right from 47. And so, wouldn't be shocking if Carlson wins this job, considering that he's been a little bit better recently, and he is the Packers' actual draft pick. Then from Wes Hodkwitz, Michael Pratt leads the number two offense to points as Greg Joseph makes a 52-yarder to end drill. Dubose made an insane catch on sideline to aid series, skied to get the ball. I just think there's been too many positives to risk Grant Dubose hitting the waiver and having another team pick him up because I assume that other teams around the league have seen what he did in preseason in that first game specifically. And also when you look at one of his, I think it was a punt. He was on the the punt return coverage. He went down the field, made the tackle. I think he adds some special teams ability as well. So I think the Packers need to find a way to, to keep him on this roster. And that comes down to, as I said earlier, will Malik Heath get cut as a, as the, uh, the odd man out, or will they keep seven? That's a, that's a good question. And then here we have to end it off. Matt Schneiman says this. Evan Williams picks off Josh Johnson over the middle to win two minutes for the backups. Rookie safety has five interceptions in camp. Packers flood the field and celebrate. So Evan Williams has made a lot of nice plays. has made a lot of tackles in the preseason as well. Um, that's pretty much it from today's practice. I think that there were a lot of positives and negatives just from my overall um, you know, takeaways of, of what happened here. And let me actually read you one final tweet that I had saved somewhere. It should be um, pretty close here. Packers offense ones, Carlson 35 yard at a tie. Packers O twos, Joseph 51 yard at a tie. Packers O threes, Carlson 51 yarder to tie. And then Packers D ones, Tucker misses 62 yarder to tie. Packers D twos, Evan Williams interception. And then Packers D3, forced turnover on downs. So all in all, I'd say the biggest takeaway from this practice is just how good the Packers defense is playing against one of the better offenses in the entire NFL. You know, holding them to a 62-yard field goal, an interception, then a, a turnover on downs. That's pretty good from this Packers defense. And, you know, when it comes to these joint practices preseason, you'd love to just, you know, have a huge takeaway and say, oh my gosh, this means the Packers are going to have a top five defense. And maybe that's the case. It's just hard to know for sure until the season starts, but lots of good signs from this defense today. Offense seemed to be a little bit more up and down, but got better as the, the practice went on. Um, but that's all for this video. If you want more Packers content, make sure you subscribe and turn on the post notifications. You can also follow me on Twitter for more Packers content, Luke Beller 3 and I will be out recapping the preseason game on Saturday. So if you want to see that, um, make sure you subscribe and turn on the post notifications so you don't miss that video. But thanks for watching, 
and I'll see you guys next time.